90 points uh, on the Nifty. So slowly, slowly, but it's moving higher. Uh, still away from the day's high, which was, of course, the open. Uh, but uh, let's see if uh, we are able to get there. Tridhi Bhattacharya is Chief Investment Officer, Equities at Edelweiss Asset Management Company. Uh, he's joining in now. Tridhi, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. You know, I was just before coming in looking at uh, just valuations one year forward. That is F524. And we are now at about uh, 17 and a half times uh, FI24 earnings. Uh, the last 10 year average is uh, 17 times, uh, almost exactly 17 times earnings. Uh, with this 4.5% correction in the last 5 or 6 days, uh, you know, we are, we are back to the 10 year average. How do you think about valuations now, Sridhar? That's the bigger question. I mean, would you kind of look, look at this where we are now compared to the average? Or uh, is that a moving number based on what earning, where you are on earnings? What's your sense? Good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, and I would say that the absolute valuations were actually less of an issue all the time. Uh, it's probably gotten in our favor over the last week or fortnight of correction that we have seen. Our issue historically over the last six months has been the relative valuations relative to the other emerging markets. And um, that is where we saw a bit of a, uh, a bit of a flow out of India into other emerging markets. But off late, given how the headlines have come out of China reopening this, that, the other, the headlines have been showing slightly slower growth. So overall, net net, it's a far more balanced situation. So I would say on net balance in answer to your question, that while absolute valuations are in line with average, the relative valuations, we are probably still a little bit on the expensive side, but we are gradually getting to a level where all the markets would be seen with regards to the fundamental earnings growth that we will see, and which in which case India stands out still quite well. Mm. Uh, Tridip, any thoughts on oil marketing companies? With the sharp precipitous decline seen in crude prices this week, uh, Brent is now almost at $75 per barrel. Oil marketing companies like BPCL have re-rated. The marketing margin picture is going to look much better. UBS recently indicated that this quarter in Q4, it could be the best earnings quarter for oil marketing companies uh, in the last many quarters. Is this a tactical sure. play for you? Sure, I think uh, uh, clearly the, the factors that you talked about, uh, you know, will play out in the near term and will lead to a bump up in earnings in the OMCs overall. However, uh, one has to balance this the near term positivity with regards to the fact that we are gradually heading towards an election year. And generally, if there is a bit of populism, then some of these gains to be passed on to the uh, uh, to the end customer could be another uh, another uh, another issue to contend with. Maybe not immediately, but about six months down the line. So I think from a from a trading standpoint, uh, clearly, kind of you know near term uh, bump up in earnings being better better for the share prices. But from an investment standpoint, um, you know, given that uh, they are still PSUs, and from a PSU basket, uh, uh, you know, the the minority shareholders how they get treated over a period of time needs to be balanced uh, overall. So from a trade perspective, yes. From an investment perspective, we need to evaluate other factors as well. Tradeep, hi. Good afternoon. Surabhi here. Um, yes. uh, just want to get your house call on IT. There is so much news flow and so much going on. The uh, underperformance and the headwinds of the recession and uh, most of these companies undergoing some form of a management change. Maybe, you know, top level, maybe tier two. So, uh, how are you looking at the sector and does it make the cut uh, and make it to your portfolios? Um, it does. And I think on net balance, we went underweight uh, the sector about a year and a half ago, September of the uh, uh, year before. Um, and uh, round about from September, about a year from then, uh, we have been cutting our underweight position. We, as we speak, we would be neutral to maybe marginally overweight IT services in our various portfolios that we run. So on net balance, I would say that incrementally uh, through this correction that we have seen, uh, we've actually turned a little more positive than what we have been. But is it an outright overweight call? Not yet, because I think overall uh, the calibration of demand with regards to the earnings estimates for FY24, which is a year ahead, is yet to happen. 
And I think if you give it a month, which is probably April, May, by that point in time, all of this would be realigned. Um, so uh, that will be a lot better time visibility wise. Prices maybe will probably get uh, a little ahead of time. So you have to balance, uh, you know, how you see the outlook as well as versus how you see the numbers coming out. Uh, now you may have the prices later on, you might have better visibility. So I think on net balance, incrementally positive. Um, but we have not yet or majorly overweight the spectre, uh, sector, but looking for incremental adding to weights. Okay, so can I then ask you, what is the sector that gets the top billing uh, for you? What would your key overweights be in a market which is dealing with so much of news and noise? Absolutely, I think it's a great question. I would say that uh, particularly in times like these, uh, one has to sort of start with a medium term hat and then tweak the portfolio with regards to near term to kind of, you know, manage the uh, damage, if I may call it that way. And from a medium term standpoint, what still sticks out quite well for India is the infrastructure, capital goods uh, and the uh, private sector capex cycle, which will likely to happen over the next two to three years. It's a multi-year theme and we continue to remain meaningfully overweight across our portfolios in whatever shape and form uh, 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 that we can get our hands to on very various market cap ranges. Um, the second area that we are also quite positive on are very uh, bottom-up India-specific themes like indigenization of defense, uh, uh, you know, beneficiaries of government growth schemes like PLI. On net balance, we think that 2023 would be probably kind of, you know, a time where bottom-up factors will drive a lot of earnings and we'll have to count on that rather than the macro tailwind. We think that macro could be headwinded, particularly in the first six months of the year overall. Um, so those would be a few areas that uh, we would be kind of, you know, uh, overweight uh, uh, in, our, in our sector. Uh, I think the rebound in credentials uh, in financials has by and large kind of, you know, played out to a certain extent. We still continue to like the sector, but less so probably than about three to six months ago. So those would be the areas that you are kind of, you know, positive on. All right, uh, Swadeep, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, good framework. And uh, as always, uh, good getting that uh, perspective for our viewers from you. Thanks indeed. 100 points, so slowly inching higher, 17,100 almost is what we 